Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Nimbasa City. Today we'll be looking at a round four matchup of the Lyon League Cup of the format Sun and Moon to Celestial Storm of the season 2019. Uh, this took place in September 2018, right after Worlds, uh, right when the new season started again. And this will be play. This will be a game between Zorak McCargo, with many different texts, notably Uxie Mesprit. Who, if you don't know, Mesprit does seventy damage if you have Uxie on the bench, and it's a psychic type, which is perfect to knock out Buzzwolves, and with a choice band Buzzwolves GX, as well as other psychic weak attackers. And player B is playing. Zor uh, is just Magnazone, not Zorak Magnazone. I don't know why I was about to say that, but Magnazone with uh, Stevens Resolve and Rabombi as the engine. So, uh, so the strategy of the Zorak Macargo deck, um, that's actually me on the left. So if I, if at some point during the during the game I say I do this or I do that um, that's because it's me although I will try to retain from saying that um, player A plays a timer ball flips two heads uh, the game would have surely gone a lot differently if only one head was flipped or zero even but here comes a smooth over, probably for a judge, because that is what you do after a Stevens resolve. And here comes a trade, discarding an enhanced hammer. Player B only plays one special energy, and it's not even that critical. It's a beast energy. So discarding that enhanced hammer is really probably the best dead card to be able to discard. There are other a few dead cards in this matchup, such as the Uxi Mesprit. A Tapu Lele is played for the uh, for the Rayquaza matchup. But not much else. And uh, here comes a Riot of Speeding for 70 damage. 40 for each po well, 20 for each Pokemon in play, there are 2, so 40. Plus that choice band, 70 damage. And over to player B. Here comes an Ultra Ball. Probably going to search out a Tapu Lele. Or just a Magnemite, actually. And here comes a Cynthia. There was a Rare Candy in hand, but no Magnemite in play, so... Cynthia for... What should be a... Uh, what's hopefully a rare candy magnezone. We see a whole lot of basics, a Rubombi and a Nest Ball. Probably gonna search out another Magnemite. Yep, there it is. And here comes another Nest Ball. Down for a Dialga. Probably gonna attach that Dialga ready to overclock. I don't see any supporter in player B's hand. Uh, I see a choice band, an energy, and I could not see what else, but it's just going to be a pass, so player A draws, has two basic Pokemon, really needs to fill up that bench, so here comes those two, and a unit energy on the buzzwell, ready to Sledgehammer if the active Zora goes down. It is a two-hit KO deck, so Sledgehammer, you know, it helps. Uh, Zorak does do 120 base damage with a full bench, so a Sledgehammer is the same thing, just for one unit energy instead of a DCE. It's also a basic, which means it's a much lower commitment. So here comes a Smooth Over and a Trade, discarding a Max Potion. The opponent's deck is a one-hit KO deck, so Max Potion doesn't do anything. Neither does Ace Rolo. So it's just Cynthia and... Draw. Here comes another Zorak and a Nest Ball if Nest Ball decides to come down. But I, player A does take the KO, so no real need for that Nest Ball. Maybe in a future turn. 
the great thing about Zoric Macargo is that you literally draw whatever you want once per turn. So, um, oh, here comes a promotion, promote, uh, promote the Dialga, and then just a straight overclock. So here comes an Ultra Ball for a Tapu Lele, Tapu Lele grabbing a Kukui. Smooth over what's probably going to be a Devoured Field. There's one Devoured Field in the deck, one Kukui, really just to hit that 180, one hit KO. Um, if you can one hit KO certain Pokemon, and here comes a trade. Uh, if you can, if you play the two hit KO war, and then you can suddenly one hit KO at some point, then that is just a whole lot more powerful. Uh, the deck also plays a counter catcher to be able to catcher up a Tapu Lele. Uh, Kukui at the same turn, choice band, take the KO. Uh, that sort of thing, really just a lot of sneaky plays around. But here comes an Ultra Ball for a Rubombi. I don't see any, oh, there's a Tapu Lele. I was going to say I don't see any supporter in hand, but there is a Tapu Lele. So Tapu Lele probably for a Cynthia or a Volcanor, actually. If the Volcanor can be found, then I can just grab a Rare Candy. But there's no Volkner. It seems like the uh, player B only plays one Volkner and it's prized. So here comes a Lily for four. And there's no rare candy, no way to search out a rare candy, and that's just a scoop. Straight up, there's nothing that can be done, and that's. Yeah. And you'll you see how the consistency of Zorark just is just fast enough to overcome anything else. Of course, if that early timer ball had not hit double heads, the game would have probably gone quite differently. That early judge probably wouldn't have happened, uh, among other things. But, you know, the game goes as the game goes, so not much can be said about that. Uh, we see these two players setting up for the game to um, looks like player B has three basics strong star from Zoroark and it's two Zorura and a Slugma pretty solid start and player B has an Ultra Ball for a Magnemite so that is also an extremely strong start being able to get those basics, as I keep mentioning, early uh, down, very early in the game, as as early as turn one, um, it's really what you're searching for. So an Ultra Ball discarding two Metal Energy. If you have a Mount Coronet in play, that's basically free Metal Energy, um, free free discard. And here comes a Lily for five. We already see that Ultra Ball and Rare Candy in hand which means just a pass is probably necessary at this point. Um, or if you have, oh, it looks like player B drew into the minor zone, so an Ultra Ball discarding a Volkner and a Metal Energy down to get that Cutie Fly. It looks like Rubombi is in hand. So just really just getting all those basics down Player B knows that there's no way this Magnezone is going to get KO'd, this Magnemite. So it's really just going to be a draw and a pass. And uh, there's two judges in hand. Looks like player A is trying to figure out if they should wait or if they should play the judge. Um, yeah, play the judge. And here comes down that judge. Probably definitely the smarter play, knowing what is in player B's hand. After that massive Lily, um, that free Ultra Ball in the discard signifies that the combo is in hand. Discarding that Volkner is really just an indication that like, hey, look, I don't need this. I have what I need in hand. I don't need to search it out. So here comes a Bench Zaru and a Pass. After that Judge, um, 
Judge is one of those cards that if you don't have anything to pull yourself back from it, it's kind of weak. Um, I mean, it's strong in the sense that it disrupts your opponent, but it's weak for you because you don't have anything to back yourself up from it. Um, but here comes an Ultra Ball discarding a an Enhanced Hammer and a Mesprit. Really two dead cards in this matchup, grabbing a top of Lily for a judge. My opponent, um, sorry, I missed what was played on player B's turn. Oh yeah, so that's a, uh, that's a Steven's Resolve, really just searching out any three cards in, ha in deck and passing the turn. And here is the part that really turns the game around. An Ultra Ball gets played, discarding two supporters, and draws a, grabs a Zoroark, and then attaches a DCE, and attack, attacks for 100 damage, half of Dustman Necrozma's HP. Now, if this was not... Um, If if that combination of cards weren't drawn, if the Ultra Ball and the DC weren't drawn, then both players would be in equally bad positions. Only basics in play, no energy. But suddenly having an attacker in play, plus a draw engine for the following turn, so being able to discard whatever top deck it shows up, is really just what turned the game around. And uh, here comes a Cynthia, really searching out, still searching out, that rare candy Magnezone. and drawing a fresh hand of six cards and there's a fisherman there's a rubombi there's a tapulele and i don't see what else a magnemite but that's not a magneton that's not a magnezone that's not a rare candy um i see a magnezone in hand but no rare candy so here just comes a uh i think it's called honey gathering uh just searching out two energy Two basic energy from the deck, putting them in hand, and then mount coronet. And looks like player A is gonna say, "Hey, um, discard that Acerola. What a great discard!" Attaches a a unit energy to that bench as Aurora, ready to become a Zora. I can use that Trickster GX, um, just like Copycat that I was talking about in the last game. It's a great GX attack. You can copy anything. On the opponent's side of the field, and you can really just start taking knockouts with it. And uh, and so here comes a Mount Coronet and a Stevens Resolve. It looks like, and I think there was a Honey Gathering as well. And so if there is ever a turn to judge, it would be this turn. There is a whole load of energy in hand. Um, player oh it looks like that's a top deck Macargo what a perfect top deck and if there was ever a turn to judge it would be this turn just putting what was searched back into the deck removing that Stevens resolve from play since you know it was played and putting a whole lot of energy that were in the discard back into the deck here comes a nest ball for a Zerua and a judge comes down with another unit energy down to the benches over that already had a unit energy, the Trickster GX attack cost is two dark types, two dark energy. So right now, Trickster GX is fulfilled. And here comes draw for four, timer ball for tails, and tails. And then right is beating for the KO. Here comes a Dusk Main Necrozma and Cynthia. Cynthia really just hoping to draw as as I mentioned earlier, really just hoping to draw that combo. Rare Candy Stage 2. And finally actually get cards into play. The Rubombi is already in play, so attacks can 
definitely come down with the retreat on the Mount Coronet. Um, that setup can't happen. And there's the Magnet Zone, but there's no rare candy. So it looks like it's just going to be a pass or at least a honey gathering. Right, here comes the Mount Coronet and honey gathering for two. And there's a pass and draw top deck DCE. Not really necessary at this point, but you know, always good to have. And my card goes smooth over for any one card. Puts it on top of the deck, trades, discarding that enhanced hammer, drawing a Zorark. Trades the Zorak, dis uh, trades the Oranger, draws a Kukui, and a DCE. Not really necessary, but you know, just gonna attach it anyway, have that in play. Kukui for two. Also not necessary, but just get extra cards in play. Drops that stadium, discarding that Mount Coronet, and attacks for the KO. And here comes that Rubombi active. Rubombi, you know, you can't sacrifice another Magnemite. I th I think player B only plays 3 0 3. Here comes that type of lele. Probably gonna search out some kind of search for Cynthia, actually. I think there aren't any more uh, Stevens Resolve in the deck. Uh, probably three were played, and the deck only plays three, or two were played, and one is prize. I don't remember. But here comes a Cynthia. Honey Gathering, grabbing two energy. You know, Honey Gathering, really, really great card to have in, oh geez, that's a handful of energy. Honey Gathering, really a great card to play in mid game, late game, but uh, anyway, here's a Zorark trade, Zorark trade, smooth over. Probably gonna grab a Guzma. Gives him up that Decimator Cosman Trickster GX for the KO. For that was final two prize cards. Here comes the discard Cynthia, Guzma, and Trickster GX for the KO. And there's a the handshake. Thanks everybody for watching. Um, if you want to see the list of the Zorark McCargo deck, I will put it in the description. Um, and that's all for now. Zorark Macargo takes the win over uh, over Magnezone 2-0 and moves on to top four. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.